Vacations are meant to be enjoyable from beginning to end, but studies show that the beginning and the end are actually the worst times of the trip, usually sparked by mistakes with the reservation or some other snafu. So how do you turn around vacation disappointments? The WSJ's Charlie Wells is here to let us know. How are you doing, Charlie? Great, Lee, hello. Good, so you would think that the beginning of the trip would be filled with all the excitement and the anticipation, but that's not the case, why not? That's right. I spoke with a professor who actually put out that study in 2013 in the Journal of Travel Research, which found that the beginning part of the trip is incredibly stressful. And what he said is that people have a lot of anticipation. They might, you know, have a lot of high expectations. They read reviews, see beautiful images, and arrive. And, you know, paradise is often just constructed in our minds, so there can be a lot of disappointment on that early end. His recommendation, though, was if you're going to go cheap, don't go cheap in the beginning. You can really overcome some of those initial sort of bad feelings by getting that drink, staying in the nicer hotel on the earlier side of the trip instead of the, the middle of the trip when you'll just feel better in general. Yeah, and the Waldorf Astoria has a way that it deals with these initial disappointments, right? Right, they've got a really interesting personal concierge service where even before a traveler arrives at the hotel, they've been contacted by a, a real person. They, that real person gives travelers an email address, a phone number. When the traveler arrives at the hotel, they can actually skip the front desk, go straight to their rooms and check in there. So that takes some of that initial stress off the trip and people can really just start diving in and having fun. Okay, and beyond what hotels are doing to help people through vacation, vacation hardships. Do you have a few other tips on what people can do as individuals besides staying in a, a, a better hotel in the beginning? I spoke with a really interesting Australian travel researcher and he told me that one big mistake that people tend to make is that they plan their vacations like they plan out their work days. So you know they'll schedule that 11 a.m. brunch then they'll have the 1 p.m. massage on the Lido deck and then the 3 p.m. tour of some exotic location and you know if they miss that 1 p.m. they feel disappointed they feel like the whole day has been thrown off. So his idea was to sort of rethink how you think about time on your vacation. Mm -hmm. You want to approach it sort of like, you know, an explorer where you're kind of going through the day, um, you know, maybe you see friends, maybe you go to this interesting part of the city, but if you don't get there, that's fine, and that seems to pay dividends. Okay, you talked to a woman who showed up at a hotel in Mexico and found the place that she booked her reservation at to be, in her words, busy and boozy, as she called it. Tell me about her story. She was a really interesting woman. She actually wanted sort of a peaceful, restful vacation. She paid for her accommodation in advance um, for a month. And when she arrived, highly, highly disappointed. But, you know, after a couple days of wandering from kind of bar to bar, t-shirt shop to t-shirt shop, she did something that I think a lot of travelers should really keep in mind, and that is to ask locals, because they're really the experts here. And you have to ask locals the right questions. So what she did is she went away from some of the tourist spots and said, hey, what would you do for fun? The key is not to ask what would a tourist do for fun, but what would you, as someone who lives here, do? the answer is going to be a lot better. And, you know, it really sounds like you're saying at the end of the day, it just boils down a lar in large part to attitude, right? That's very true. Um, you know, one of the other travelers that I spoke with was a woman who had friends gather from all across the country. They flew to Miami, got on a huge cruise liner, were so excited. The moment they got on, they were disappointed. The staff were rude. Um, you know, the rooms were booked all over the cruise ship <laughs> together as a group of friends might be. Yeah. They had to call each other on phones instead of cell phones. And, you know, it just, it was bad news after bad news, but they started laughing about it at the end of the day, and that actually brought them closer together. All right, Charlie, thanks a lot. Really great report. We appreciate it.